What's going on guys, it's your boy Mr Woz and today I'll be going through all of my room light and in-game settings to make sure you have the smoothest gameplay experience when playing old school RuneScape and hopefully at least one of these settings will make a difference for you all. So let's start with the in-game settings as there is only a few to go through. So let's go on display settings. Now this one is more of a personal preference because I play on fixed classic layout which makes RuneScape look a little bit more compact and close together which I really like. And for me it just makes the game stand out just that little bit more compared to the other two layouts which are resizable classic and resizable modern. But again it's all personal preference. Now keeping on display settings, as you can see the brightness is at the halfway point so it's not too dark and not too bright. Now again it is personal preference but doing these subtle changes will make a big difference in your RuneScape gameplay. So let's quickly move on to the last section which is control settings. As you can see there is a bunch of options but luckily none of these actually make a graphical difference or make your gameplay smoother. So if I type in graphics for example, as you can see it's pretty much the same as the display settings but with a couple of extra personal preference options such as hiding the roofs etc. Now let's move on to the main room light settings. I'm not going to go through every single plugin as there is only a few important settings that will make your gameplay look great as well as running nice and smooth. So let's start with the first plugin which is called Animation Smoothing. This is probably the biggest plugin to use as this really does make a difference in your RuneScape gameplay. So let me give you an example. So this is me in Karamja Dungeon and I'm going to show you the difference between having this plugin on and having this plugin off. Now for those who didn't see much of a difference, let me show you a side by side comparison. So as you can see when the plugins turned off, everything looks very delayed, almost as if you're lagging a lot and the game just doesn't look great at all. And when the plugin is turned on, everything looks super smooth, hence the name of the plugin. So let's take a look at the attack animation when I'm killing this lesser demon. It looks very delayed looking and almost looks like I'm playing a retro game in the 80s. And with the plugin turned on, look how smooth everything is. And as you can see, turning the animation smoothing on really does make a huge difference. So for me, this is the best plugin to use to make your RuneScape gameplay super smooth. But we will go one step further with the next plugin, which is called GPU. This plugin is where your RuneScape will graphically make a difference and start to look very sharp. So let's start off with the first setting, which is called Draw Distance. Now the maximum is 90 and this basically means you can see a lot further out when roaming around in RuneScape so you can click further away and see at a greater distance and of course this will make your RuneScape look so much better to look at. So as you can see I'm outside the Grand Exchange and look what happens when I turn my draw distance down to say 30 for example you can't see the bankers anymore or even the trees and walls at the back of the Grand Exchange and it doesn't look very nice. So simply just clicking the arrow up to increase the draw distance will help a lot and make your gameplay experience much better so I would personally 100% keep this at 90 which is the maximum it can go. The next setting is called remove colour banding. I keep this turned on because it basically smooths out the colours in game. So for example if I turn the setting off as you can see there is weird shadow lines on the floor and walls and when this setting is turned on all the colours are smoothed out and it just looks so much better so I would recommend keeping this setting on. The next setting is anti-aliasing, I think I've said that right. This setting is in most games these days and this just smooths out the edges seen in images to make them appear less blurred and blends colours to make visuals look more natural. So you have the options here by turning this off completely and disabling it which I don't recommend or slowly going up from times 2, times 4, times 8 and then times 16. Now this all depends on your GPU as well. I'm not saying you need a 3090 or even a 40 series graphics card but just test the settings out for yourself and see what works for you but I would highly recommend leaving this on times 16 for the best results. The next setting is called UI Scaling. Now this is a very important one as this will greatly enhance the graphics to make the UI stand out and look sharp. 
Now the only way you're going to see a difference is by looking at my inventory. So as you can see I've got a bunch of random items just to give you an example. Now the setting you want to be using is XBR or times BR, however you want to say it, as this setting makes the UI stand out and it just looks really sharp and nice. Now I will quickly go through the other options and just watch how my inventory and chat box changes. So as you can see the options made my UI look super weird especially by Cubic Mitchell which made everything look so blurry. And then of course going back to the XBR option which looks stunning. So with this setting there is only one winner. The next setting is called Fog Depth. Now I have this set at zero just because I don't want the distractions from the fog and in my opinion this actually affects how the game looks. So once again in the grand exchange and let's click on the arrow up just to show you what the fog looks like. So as you can see I'm only at five and you can see the fog in the background. Now to be fair this doesn't look too bad but once you start getting towards the 10 to 20 plus mark then it just looks very over the top and overwhelming and it just blocks everything in the background very similar to the draw distance. So personally I would keep this on zero but if you want to have a little bit of fog then you can set it between zero and five for example but any higher than that it just doesn't look nice in my opinion. The next setting is called compute shaders. Now this is linked to the draw distance setting and turning this on just extends the draw distance which is most probably how I got to 90. I'm not so sure what the default number is when turning compute shaders off but I would recommend turning this on as it will improve your overall gameplay experience. You will also need to restart the plugin for changes to take effect. The next setting is called anisotropic filtering. I've probably butchered that but never mind. But this setting enhances the image quality of textures on surfaces. I have set this at the highest which was 16 and to be honest I didn't notice a difference between having this on the highest and having this on zero. Maybe there is some parts of RuneScape where you can see a difference but nothing from what I could see. Either option doesn't really affect your GPU as well. Now the next setting is called color blindness correction. Now as this doesn't affect me I have this set at none but for those who are colorblind then this is something you need to test out for yourself as I'm not 100% sure what is the best option for you. The next setting is called bright textures. Now I have this turned on as it does make a little difference when wearing capes especially fire capes or inferno capes. So as you can see this is with the setting turned off and this is with the setting turned on. And all this does is make the textures just that little bit brighter which I do like as it makes things like capes and fires for example stand out just that little bit more. But again this is personal preference so if you don't like this setting you can simply turn it off no problem. Now the next setting is called unlock FPS. This just simply removes the 50 FPS cap when moving your camera in game. So as you can see I'm just rotating my camera using the arrow keys. And this is with the plugin turned off and this is with the plugin turned on. So the camera movement looks so much smoother as it's hitting the 60 FPS mark. I would keep this option ticked just to make the gameplay a lot more smoother. The next setting is V-Sync mode. Now a lot of people including myself in the past got confused with this setting. So to put it simple if screen tearing interferes with your gaming experience. So for example if room light isn't rendering properly which you can physically see when this happens then I would enable V-Sync. On the other hand if you're facing input lag or decreased frame rates then turn V-Sync off will be the correct alternative. I have this set at adaptive sync which is a smarter way to render frames and also helps eliminate tearing and minimize stuttering. But once again I will test this out for yourself and choose which option is best for you as everybody will be different. And lastly we have FPS target which means the number of frames per second the game tries to run at. Now I have this set at 240 which is my monitor's refresh rate. But when it comes to RuneScape, as long as you're above 60 FPS, that is more than enough. Any lower than 60 FPS, then you will notice a lot of stuttering and lag. This will make your gameplay experience not enjoyable. Now this setting only works when V-Sync is turned off and FPS control is turned on. Now if you want to test this out for yourself, just type in FPS control in the RuneLight settings, turn this on and this will show your FPS in the top right of your RuneLight client like so. The only thing I have changed in this setting is the global FPS target which was 60 FPS 
I changed it to 240 like I did with the FPS target setting. Now the last plugin I'm going to show you is the rune light settings. So simply type in rune light on your plugin and there is only five settings I will go through and the rest of them don't apply to this video. So starting off with the window settings, I have the game size set to my monitor's resolution which is 2560 by 1440. If you have a 1080p monitor, then type in 1920 by 1080. This will help a lot, especially if you're playing in full screen. The next setting is resize type, which basically lets you choose how windows should resize when opening and closing panels. There is two options, which is keep window size and keep game size. Personally, I have tested both of these out and didn't see a difference. So for me, I kept this at keep game size. The next setting is lock window size. I have this option on always as this stops room light from being in windowed mode or resizable mode and it just keeps the client in fixed full screen mode which is what I like and the other two options are resizing and never but you can choose any option that feels right for you. And lastly we have remember client position which is very handy in my personal opinion so when turned on if you close room light for example and you're going to sleep the next time you load up room light again, it will remember the position you had it last time. So if you have this in resizable mode and let's say the client was in the top right of the screen, let me close down room light and let me load room light back up. And as you can see, it remembered the position where I closed it. So it's very handy if you want your room light in a specific position, especially if you play multiple games on one monitor. Okay, so that is the only settings you need to make your gameplay look exactly like mine. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't use the RuneLight HD plugin, well, as much as I love the way it looks, I think I'm just so used to the old retro look if you like, and I can't see myself switching to HD anytime soon. And also, HD really impacts your GPU. You could test this out for yourself, but as soon as you turn this plugin on, your PC will start going crazy. But again, if you want to experiment and play in HD, then that's not a problem. So guys, that will conclude this video. If you want me to do a similar video where I show you my other room light settings such as fully customising your bank tabs, label your herbs, ground markers, hiding junk loot, fully customising the colour of low, medium and high value items and so much more, leave me a comment below this video and let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, comment below if this video has helped you out and subscribe to my channel if you are new. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.